So there are several studies as far as delaying risks for ACL reconstruction. The American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons recommends that you should do your ACL reconstruction within five months because the longer you wait, the higher the risk is for injuring your knee. As I mentioned previously, ACL, the ACL protects your knee. So you lose one of your protective mechanisms when you don't have an ACL. So any time you play a sport or you participate in an activity that involves cutting and pivoting, you don't have that protection. So you're at higher risk to tear your ACL or a high risk to injure your cartilage. Uh, some studies show within five years, you have an 80%, if you stay active, within 80% chance of either injuring your meniscus or cartilage within five years. Personally, I think it could even be higher than that. So if you're gonna maintain activity and you're unstable, then without an ACL, you put yourself at high risk for further injury. In the pediatric population, when their growth plates are still open, we sometimes recommend that you hold off an ACL reconstruction because we drill tunnels to, to, for, to, uh, for this ACL procedure. And sometimes these tunnels can go through the growth plate. So we recommend for certain population, if they're very young and we, don't, we feel that it might affect their growth, we tell them to hold off on surgery. However, if it's a patient who's almost full growth and they only have limited time left to grow, we can still do a re, uh, certain types of ACL reconstructions. Usually we use like a soft tissue graft and we can still do it in growing patients, but it, they have to be closer to the end of their growing cycle. We generally recommend using your own tissue for your ACL reconstruction. Uh, the main reason is uh, a major study from the United States showed that using donor tissue or from a donor bank tissue had up to a 25% failure rate in young patients. The three choices you have using from your own tissue is you can use your patella tendon, which is the central tendon from your kneecap to your shin bone. You can use the quadricep tendon, which is the top from the, from the uh, top of your kneecap on and then the hamstring tendons. All three are, via, uh, are excellent choices and all three are acceptable and all three have the same results. The ones most commonly used were the patella tendon, which is considered the gold standard. And hamstring became very popular because we, uh, it's a nice graft to use because of the strength. And now the modern graft is called the quadricep tendon. We use all three. So when someone sustains an ACL injury, the first thing, as we mentioned previously, is you get swelling, you feel pop, and you're, you have limitations of motion, you're unable to bear weight. The first thing we usually do is after the, the physician diagnoses you with an ACL tear and we discuss surgery, prior to surgery, we, let, we wait for the swelling to come down. We want to make sure the swelling's down and we want to put you in physical therapy for you to get as much of your range of motion back prior to surgery. This usually takes about two to four weeks before we proceed to surgery. Once we start surgery, the surgery itself is usually about an hour and a half on average, it can be a little bit less, a little bit more, but generally depending on other issues at the time. For example, if you have a meniscal injury or a cartilage injury, that can make your surgery longer, but if you don't have anything like that, we can, your surgery generally is about an hour, hour and a half. After surgery, you'll be on crutches for about 10 to 14 days. Uh, we start you in physical therapy right away, as soon as possible to make sure we can obtain range of motion and make, make sure we can get you to walk or bear weight. By six weeks, we generally rec state that you should be walking normally. Like no one should know that you had an ACL reconstruction. If you're walking around your house or you're walking in a mall, you should be walking almost normally without a limp. By three to four months, depending on how you're progressing in rehab, we, we start you jogging, trying to increase your activity level. And then return to sport somewhere between seven and nine months depending on how you progress to physical therapy. Once you get to a point in physical therapy that we say that you're starting sport specific, like we're trying to get you to the sport you wanna get back to, then we see how well your muscles are dynamically strong and how well your balance is, how well you land, how well you can cut and pivot without injuring yourself. As I mentioned before, this last stage is to prevent re-injury. Re-injury and ACL uh, surgery can happen. Uh, depending on what study you read, it can be anywhere from two to 20%. The other issue you have to understand is the contralateral leg or the opposite leg, the uninjured leg, has the same risk of injury as your reconstructed leg. So both sides are at risk. Some people say the other leg is at risk because you actually put more force on that. You, you, don't, you protect your uh, surgical leg 
and you can actually injure your other leg. So they have the same risk. When you're younger, your risk can be anywhere from 15, 10, 15, 20%, depending on how active you are, what sport you go back to. So the way we minimize re-injuries, one, we actually do these neuromuscular training and do rehab to prevent injury. Uh, and secondly, we also strengthen the contralateral or the opposite or uninjured leg as well to make sure that is as strong and we return to sport. As far as the surgical procedure, as I mentioned before, the reason you need surgery is, is for, to prevent uh, further injury to your knee. For example, we had an athlete who was mentioned in the news whom had uh, who tried to play on it without an ACL. However, he needed to have his knee uh, aspirated or had the fluid taken out of his knee every week for about three months until he had surgery. And as I mentioned before, the ACL protects your knee from further injury. So if you, he kept playing and he kept injuring his knee, that's why his knee kept swelling up. So that's why at the end of when his season was over, they took the fluid out and then they reconstructed him. When you don't have an ACL, you don't protect your knee and you continue to injure your knee. And swelling is the first sign of an injury to your knee. The ACL is a ligament that connects the tibia to the femur, your thigh bone to your shin bone. It helps control rotation and it says essentially protects your knee from injury. It protects your cartilage and your meniscus from injury. So ACL injuries occur when you're involved in cutting or pivoting sports. You're, you're usually what happens is a non-contact injury when you plant your leg and you turn. Generally people feel a pop, but most of the time it involves in sports like soccer, football, um, basketball, and skiing. The most likely age group for ACL injuries is 15 to 25. They are the most active population. Also, they have the highest ligament laxity, elasticity, and they don't have the best neuromuscular control. ACL injuries are more common in female athletes by a factor of two to six times higher. Uh, this is involves because biomechanical differences, anatomical differences, and also hormonal differences. The signs and symptoms of an ACL injury occur when you feel, when they plant your leg and you turn, you feel a pop and you immediately see swelling. Most of these injuries occur by non-contact. So you will see, a, a, and sometimes it's difficult to bear weight and it's most of the time happens in an athletic event or a sporting event or some type of activity that involves cutting and pivoting. If you've injured your ACL, the first thing you should do is stay off of it or just do not bear weight on it. Second thing we like to do is either immobilize or put some ice in compression. But most importantly, you have to see a physician as soon as possible. ACL injuries are diagnosed number one clinically. Your physician or orthopedic surgeon should know how to clinically diagnose an ACL injury. In our philosophy, ACL injuries should be diagnosed clinically and then we obtain an MRI to further determine if we confirm our di clinical diagnosis. For example, if the MRI will also show us if there's any other injuries besides an ACL injury, such as a meniscus or cartilage injury, which can happen up to 50% of the time with ACL injuries. ACL injuries, when someone injures their ACL, they fall into three groups. We say patients that can cope with an ACL injury. There are patients who are too unstable that they have to have surgery. And there's a third group that we say they may be able to survive without an ACL if they modify their activity. So generally, we recommend that when you see your physician, things fall in the category of how active you are. If you're a very active person, those are the patients that we generally recommend for surgery. If you're not an active person, doesn't mean by having an ACL tear that you need surgery, but it's important to understand that your physician to understand how active you are, what type of sports you're involved in, and what type of activities you want to get back to. The ACL ligament itself does not, cannot heal. Uh, there have been studies done on it several times and it's got a very poor chance for healing itself. Secondly, it's got a very poor chance when you repair it for it to heal afterwards. It has a small layer we call a synovial layer that doesn't really respond to a repair. So generally we have to, what we say is we have to reconstruct the ACL. 
And by reconstructing it is we use another ligament from your own body or from a donor bank to use as a scaffold. What we do is we put this new ligament and use it as a scaffold and over time the cells in your body will repopulate this scaffold and turn it into an ACL by a process called ligamentization. Decrease in ACL injury risk is, is number one, we, we always talk about neuromuscular training, is learning how to land, how to cut and pivoting, and make sure your muscles know how to understand where your knee is in space. For example, we recommend that your knee always be over your foot. It protects you. They, they talk about positions, a, a safe position against what we call a provocative position. These are all learned in physical therapy and rehab. Uh, generally, in the end stages of rehab, we, try to, we not only try to get you back to sport, we also try to get you to prevent injury in the future. Also, one of the other things we like to talk about is fatigue training. The better shape you're in, the less fatigue you have, the more you protect your knee.